Hi everybody, my name is Yaroslav Shuba. I am a scientist from Ukraine working in the Institute of Physiology of the National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine, which is located in Ukraine's capital, Kyiv. I am sitting in front of the setup which is used to study the basic properties of life, namely how cells of our body generate and process electrical signals. Unfortunately, there is nobody around here in the lab, even though just one and a half months ago this was a very busy place full of young scientists taking turns to do their experiments on this setup. So why it is empty now? The answer is very simple, because it is not safe here. Ironically, the place to study processes of life appeared under threat of deadly bombardment. Just a couple of kilometers from here, in the Kyiv suburb, brave Ukrainian military unshakably resist constant attacks of Russian invaders who try to capture Kyiv. From this place, the sound of explosions can be heard, and from time to time, air raid sirens go off. So people just left. The Ukrainian science is basically put on hold now, but it is by far not the only victim of Russia's invasion. The damn Russian liberators turn Ukrainian cities into scorched earth trying to liberate Ukraine. Whom do you think from? From us, Ukrainians without even formally trying to find the reason for declaring war on us. They call their invasion limited military operation under false pretenses of the Nazification and demilitarization of Ukraine. But in reality, it is Russians and their neo-fuhrer Putin who act as real Nazis. If to call things their real names, Russia simply wants to impose its will onto free nations and establish world hegemony on the Nazi slogan of final solution to the Ukrainian question. For Ukraine, it means elimination of its statehood, for part of Ukrainian people, simple extermination, whilst for another part, elimination of their national identity. And for the rest of the free world countries, dominance in international relationships. Instead of providing positive example of successful economical and social development, Russia opted to use military force and even nuclear blackmail to take revenge for the defeat in the Cold War, regain influence in the world, and restore territorial boundaries of the former Soviet Union. And it is, and it is not only Putin to be blamed for these evil intentions. Unfortunately, most of Russian people poisoned by the decades-long frenzied propaganda and infected by the ideas of national superiority and historical resentment, support these policies, as polls show. I know this from my own interaction even with Russian intellectuals and scientists who would be least expected to support such ideas, and even with those of them who work abroad. Thus, it is Russians not Ukrainians, who, no, who need real denazification. Ukraine is now in the forefront of the deadly fight with Russian Nazism and desperately needs help. Russia has to pay high price for its criminal actions. With this my message, I want to call for world governments not to be afraid of Putin's blackmail, and in addition to painful economic sanctions, timely, I repeat, timely, provide brave Ukrainians with all necessary modern weaponries and even consider opening of the second battlefront. In 1940s, not a single nation on its own could resist that time predator, Nazi Germany, and only formation of an alliance fighting on two fronts helped defeating German Nazis. For general world public, I call to provide humanitarian aid to Ukrainians and keep pressuring their governments for decisive actions. And for world scientific community, I call for cutting re all relationship with official Russian science and individual scientists supporting Russia's policies. Together, we will prevail. Glory to Ukraine and glory to people of goodwill. Thank you.